Hello everybody, this is Ketchy1383 with Ketchy Gaming, and I wanted to cover the Marvel Spider-Man 2. Technically the third game in the Spider-Man series of games that have recently come out in the past decade. And although I'm very late to the party, I do have a full-time job that sort of kept me from being able to get this game done. Along with some other things, like installing the whole entire dishwasher, which is just a painful thing to do. But I was able to get two days off of work by a very fortunate happenstance, and I uh, chugged this game out. Which I guess brings me to kind of, I wouldn't say an issue, it's, I wouldn't say it's a positive either, that this game is kind of on the short side. It's longer than Miles Morales' Spider-Man, but it's shorter than the first Marvel Spider-Man. Usually that wouldn't be a bad thing if the game had some replayability, but this one does not. I didn't want to play it again after I beat it, even though it's a relatively short game. I mean, there's other games that are really long that I'll probably eventually replay again, like Tears of the Kingdom. It's just it takes a really long time to beat those games, and that's why I don't replay them right off the bat. This one, on the other hand, there's no desire to do so. I just thought it was, in general, alright. It was entertaining enough to play through once and get it done. But it didn't like hit any sweet spots to be like, this is an amazing game. Let's do it again. I think, in part... It is due to some of the filler that they have in there. So, for me, Spider-Man is sort of a street-level hero in that he fights sort of small little bits of crime here, and in every single last game, he's always dealt with a major situation, and you fight nothing but large groups of gang members that somehow never seem to run out of people. And in all three games, all of them are extremely well equipped. And it's kind of something that the Spider-Man 2 movie game actually kind of did better back in the 2000s. Where you had something similar where you just have random events generate throughout the city. But they seem to have more of them. And a little bit more variety of them as well. While you will quickly start repeating several of the same instances over and over again. They do change as you go throughout the story. But they seem to come in blocks in terms of what you'll be doing every time. And it gets really boring really fast to the point where you just kind of skip it. Because you've already done it a ton of times. Now, as far as the combat is concerned, it's still pretty solid for the most part. There are a few sticky issues I have with, and that they've added a parry option, which is fine. It's just how they handle their parry option. Considering that you dodge, it shows a white circle, and you can dodge it, and if you dodge it while it's red, you get a perfect dodge. Well, parry is yellow, but it also changes to red. And so I end up trying to dodge, but Spider-Man, even with the ability to dodge further, doesn't seem to be able to dodge the abilities that are parried because he can't dodge fast enough even with the extended dodge. So you pretty much just need to parry, and it's kind of confusing for me at least when they go from yellow to red versus going from white to red or just having red attacks which you need to dodge either way so it just seems like a very bad combination of colors or uses on how and when you should be dodging or blocking or just outright trying not to get hit in any shape or form 
I mean, yes, they're trying to mix up the combat so that it's not too similar in comparison to the other two games, which it almost is in terms of its combinations. After unlocking everything, it pretty much felt exactly the same. And I recently played Miles Morales, and I started playing the remastered version of the first Spider-Man game, and it felt very similar in terms of its combat. So I get why they're trying to mix it up and I guess there's actually a technically a third thing the second thing I'll go over are the guns and this feels kind of on the lazy side to me in that the guns are very laser point accurate in that they didn't put any real effort into not making them like extremely good shots with their weaponry and I guess this ties into it in that, yes, the game will tell you when to dodge and you can dodge, but you can't tell it what direction to dodge and it'll automatically dodge for you and you'll dodge backwards while staying in line with the line of bullets, getting all your health drained in a heartbeat because of it. And lastly, they kind of have been avoiding this in all the other games, but they have been keeping the combat open, but in this one they narrow it down in several cases, particularly when it comes to boss fights. And in this case, the narrow sort of arena that they built for each of these fights can be somewhat limiting, and they ruin your field of view where they zoom up extremely close to Spider-Man, and in some cases, let's say the one that gave me the most trouble which is the fight with Scream the the Venom symbiote that MJ was turned into kept jumping out of frame and the camera would not keep track of it or zoom out far enough so I couldn't see her tails and she would just beat the living daylights out of Peter when I was trying to fight her and I had to try a couple times before I finally beat her because it kept doing this over and over again where the camera would zoom in real close and I couldn't see what she was doing. But it was definitely common across almost all the boss fights. And then the other part that sort of made this game drag on a little bit at times are some of the subplots and filler content that they had, particularly Miles Morales's. I got to a point where I was just skipping all of his cutscenes because the writing for this is about as good as the Marvel comics is, which is to say it's absolute trash. Even though I haven't read a Marvel comic in years, there's plenty of YouTubers I know that still read their stuff to review it, and they're like, yeah, this is bad. And it definitely feels like it's on the same level. I mean, Miles Morales spent, I don't know how many hours I was playing, where I was just helping his school out, doing petty, stupid stuff, like rescuing their mascot costume from a rival school, taking pictures for the student, and uh, I don't know, it was just, it was super boring and uninteresting and I just wanted it to stop but they kept going with that quest line and by the way what kind of school would have an e-gaming anything I mean the barrier of entry for that is so high what kind of school is this kid going to I know it's probably private but damn to be able to afford computers for students to do e-gaming and I guess another thing that sort of ties into the gameplay is that there's more noticeable bugs in this one in comparison to the other two here let me just show you a few I had a few more and I can't seem to find them in my hours of recording so but these are the two that I 
had just right off the bat and some of them I wasn't able to record or I just didn't because my software for recording just wasn't open at the time. But back to the gameplay element in that Miles side quests or I guess storyline isn't the only one plagued. Peter's is kind of plagued too. Not as bad or as cringeworthy as Miles's, but uh, it, it still can get pretty bland and completely interrupt the flow of the game to a screeching halt. In particular, while uh, doing all the quests for the Emily May Foundation with her magic green technology that supposedly somehow will generate electricity and other fun issues like riding a bike I mean yes I guess that's a way to generate it but I yeah there's a whole slew of issues with that um, and it, it's clear the people who wrote this have zero scientific background or engineering knowledge they just use buzzwords or something that somebody mentioned somewhere and well like, yeah let's use that but right here you see just riding a bike Blend as all hell. Just smack dab in the middle of the story for no reason other than, uh, I don't know, maybe filler? Instead of, I don't know, adding more street crimes that we could be going out there and solving versus riding a bicycle? Or keeping or recovering instruments from a failed music museum from being stolen nope we get all this instead of just you know more actual engaging and fun gameplay and it gets a little bit worse it's not as bad as riding a bike or finding stolen musical instruments but they brought back the mj missions although not nearly as painful as the first Marvel Spider-Man game, it's still annoying. And again, it slows down the pace of the game and makes you play a character that you have zero interest in. And I wish I can say it was just more MJ, but it's not MJ. They had one little incident, and thankfully it was only one for Miles' sort of girlfriend, Haley, and her magical spray can that somehow can change colors on top of that they added motion controls which why 2023 motion controls are garbage controls some people will use them in shooters to be more precise but in terms of anything fast paced where you need to be able to pop sights into precision faster than the other person motion controls are kind of useless for that this was just cringe worthy in terms of its controls to operate a can to shake it as soon as i found out i just had to use the thumbstick motion controls were just out but back to Haley. i mean it was just a really really boring and pointless segment and I just wanted it to end like it served no point whatsoever then she's like she's an artist who can magically spray paint within all these lines I'm sure there's people out there that are very capable but I don't know if anyone would be this capable with a can of spray paint especially just one can of spray paint because they couldn't be bothered to you know have her hold more than one so I want to talk about the story and that yes it has that same level of quality that you would get from a typical Marvel comic these days being just utter trash fire maybe a couple of steps above that but still not great by any means so it combines a whole bunch of elements from other I guess previous comics and movies so it involves Venom. It seems to be like the go-to thing with Spider-Man to be like, yep, gotta have Venom at some point. 
And in typical fashion, they ruin Venom. Not so much in terms of his characteristics and what he does in this one, but towards the end, instead of, you know, like, keeping around to be the anti-hero that he comes in the comics, they sort of just kill off the symbiote that is Venom. Even though they set up a whole entire storyline that involved Carnage, for sure. I don't know, they might magically write themselves out of it in the next one if that's the case considering that they've had sort of something similar to that in the comics to begin with so they might be able to get away with it but i think the biggest problem is is that they made harry venom in this one instead of eddie brock eddie brock is nowhere to be seen it's just all harry now, most of my Spider-Man knowledge basically comes from the cartoon in the 90s, so I don't know how much of this is lore accurate. Like, Harry having a sort of degenerate disease that will eventually kill him. And it seems to act faster in him than his parent, which they seem to have gotten from the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie, as far as I can tell. No idea if it was in the comics. But it seems to be a reused plot element in this case. An excuse to just get him tied up with the uh, symbiote to begin with. And on top of that, they brought in a whole bunch of other sort of symbiotes from other comics. Like I said before, they brought in Scream, which was an offspring of Venom. But in this case, they infected MJ instead of the person who was supposed to be infected. And you beat her and she never comes back, even though she's a reoccurring character and also becomes an anti-hero. Although they do have Martin Lee in this, he is a sort of key character as well in terms of the symbiotes. Because of him, he is sort of semi-responsible for creating the symbiote called Anti-Venom, who is a semi-anti-hero, but in this case they gave it to Peter Parker in this game by having him transfer his negative powers, I guess is what they were, or whatever they are, to Peter during the game in order to save him from the symbiote. And forming, I guess, independent one uh, and this one being anti-Venom Spider-Man for all intents and purposes. So I guess they sort of loosely tied in those two. And I had to watch a whole entire YouTube video on the origins of these symbiotes just to know that. So they seem to have borrowed a whole bunch of elements from a whole bunch of other comics and movies and slapped them together while altering things greatly and they're definitely setting up a green goblin sort of scenario i'm not sure if it's going to be with harry's dad or if it's going to be harry himself or a combination of or they're gonna bring back venom but harry as venom again with a slight remnant of the symbiote being stuck in harry and it sort of not being as strong but still there and, I don't know, maybe a possibility of having more than just Miles Morales and Peter and the possible sequel that they'll make. This one, I don't think, did as well as they would like to. I know people weren't particularly fond of Miles Morales, at least the second one, and I can see why they probably wouldn't be too fond of him in this one either. Or just, in general, the filler that they put into the game may have actually not been a good idea and kind of damaged this game in terms of its overall rating and word of mouth. But they also sort of teased Silk, which again, I had to look this one up because my knowledge mainly came from the 90s cartoon. And I'm like, oh, so that's who they are. So, you know, a potential third and fourth spider 
person, man, character. Because let's face it, there is no Spider-Man game without Peter Parker. It would not fly. I mean, they kind of probably sort of got away with it with Miles Morales, but I don't think they can do that again without Peter Parker. I mean, they've been trying for years to try to make Miles Morales a thing, and they can't. And what they're doing with this game and Miles Morales' game didn't help in any shape or form. I mean, especially Miles' final suit that he wears is just god-awful. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. Ugh. And I know people talked about Mary Jane being ugly, and based off of a screenshot, she still looked pretty young to me and somewhat attractive. I mean, it's not like Dead Space 2 where Isaac's girlfriend turns into his grandma, but still... It just seems like an overreaction on people's parts in terms of Mary Jane, at least. I know there's other games out there where they just made the female character absolutely hideous for no apparent reason. But in this case, I would say no. She's fine. I mean, she's not, like, super attractive, but she's attractive enough. Anyways, I, I, I just sort of wanted to cover this... I didn't want to do like a review because that would probably entail playing this game again and I just don't want to do that. But I still wanted to cover it in some shape or form and that's what this video is about. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching and have a good one.